Hey guys, welcome to the Saigami project. This is the second part of the video 10 tips on how to make great art with chip markers. If you are here from the first video, please continue and enjoy the video. If you are seeing this for the first time, you have to know that this is the second part of a video. Uh, the first video has a link down below so you can go to it. I would recommend to see that first and then continue with this video, but of course it's your choice. Well, anyway, just let me continue with the rest of those five tips from the 10. So please enjoy. Tip number six, saturations. Um, yeah, that, that's a little bit lighter for tip number six, whatever, it doesn't even matter. So uh, when it comes to cheaper markers, you won't have such huge selection as, for example, Copix. Copix has like, I don't know, 300 and somewhat color, like they have more colors than Pokemon. So it's uh, it's just a huge amount of number. I, I don't even care. I mean, you won't even use that much colors. Like seriously, like, like look at these colors. I swear to God, many of those are the same. I swear, I mean, I, I suck with colors, which is really bad because I'm an artist, but really, I swear to God, some of those colors are exactly the same. So cheaper markers will have less selection of colors. Like some of them will have quite a good number, like over 9,000, 90, yeah, 90, you know, 100 some. Some will have less. For example, I know the artist loved have like, I don't know, 60 somewhat colors, maybe even other. I just can't remember numbers, like, like really. I sucked in history class so much. I could remember all of the events, but not the numbers. So whatever, you will have less selection of colors, but it's okay. You, you can totally deal with that. Although you can't mix your own colors, like for example, in watercolors, where you, you know, just create your own color palettes by mixing colors, but you can basically do the same, sort of the same, the same end result, sort of, kind of, with markers. For example, in this artwork I'm working on here, I don't have any color looking similar to what Kirishima's clothing looks like. That sort of color, I don't know what it's called. It's a, it's a brownish, reddish, purplish sort of color. So yeah, I don't have any sort of color close to that. The closest was probably um, an old red, I think was the marker's name, but that was too red, like it was, more of a sort of, I don't know, burgundy color or something like that. I I don't know, I just suck with these names. So what I did was I basically used two or maybe even three. Yeah, it was basically a mixture of three colors, a red, a brown and a grayish uh, for the shadows. And guess what? It worked out. So even if you don't have as many colors, you can mix the various saturations basically creating your own tint on the paper, not in the marker. You sort of can do that if you, for example, mix those uh, copic various things, or maybe even the, yeah, even the touch markers, not the touch fab, the, the normal touch markers have refills. So technically speaking, you can blend out your own colors, but that's a completely different topic. Like no, no copics here. No, we, we are cheap. This, this is, all high cheap marker section like yeah we are we are the poor artist no copics here so you you can mix your colors of course experiment first on different piece of paper to see how your colors are blending but many many times you can basically mix all sorts of colors uh, use your grays use colors that are less saturated like uh, you know lighter blues lighter purple lighter green lighter yellow sort of yeah so you will be able to basically double the amount of colors you own not with physical markers but uh, on paper if you go over uh, colors with various other colors you can create all sorts of very interesting uh, color shades and new colors it's it's really interesting and really fun to see especially when you know that you totally don't have that color but in the end look i did that color by using six different markers, but it was totally worth it because now I have that very same color. So yay, yay, cheap markers, yay. <laughs> so yeah, you, you totally can do more colors than what you have. So it's a good thing. 
you don't need the 1700 Pokemon color markers, whatever. You you can make your own colors. It's basically, I would say it's, you know, using chip markers is very much like improvising with art, but I kind of enjoy it. Like, it makes things more interesting. Like, it, it's such a satisfying feeling to know that, yeah, what I'm using are chip markers. They suck. But I can deal with them, I can do that color, I can do that shading, I can do this artwork. Yay! The end result is sort of like copics, I mean, just look at it. It's, there's no different in the end result. I mean, sure, maybe, but it depends on how you use the markers. You can do good artwork with the cheap markers as well, so don't let the lack of colors hold you back. You can do it, pretty much, yeah. And if you're out mixing colors, my seventh tip will be to create interesting tones with your artwork. This is somewhat more on a coloring tutorial side, kinda, I would say. Uh, but at the same time, like I said, you probably will have less color, so you won't have those smooth gradient-ish effects, like it's less likely than, you know, blending colors with copics or when you have like 10 different sort of skin color uh, but you can mix in all sorts of colors to make your artwork look more interesting more 3d more 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 i i, I need to learn more words literally so um by mixing in colors that are not necessarily from the same saturation for example i like to use uh blues, purples, uh, magenta colors for uh, shading the skin and that will give it a more lively, a more 3D sort of effect. And I do the same with my markers, like I don't really have that huge variation of skin colors. Some of the skin color look even bad, like one of the artist loft markers will result in a sort of muddy skin color. But you can enhance that color by using, you know, a lively uh, purple or red. In this artwork, I used uh, a lot of red. Of course, it was in color harmony with the rest of the character. But by adding red to the skin tone, will make my other tones, saturations look more interesting. You can experiment with that and it will enhance the result of your artworks. So... You know, using more advanced coloring, even with cheap markers, will result in much better looking artwork. Of course, once again, it's more on the coloring technique side, but uh, like I said, it's not about the price tag of your marker, it's about how good you can use them, how good your technique is. So it's really good to experiment with mixing all sorts of colors here, like what sort of shades or highlights you can use. Once again, use them on a different piece of paper first to see how some colors match are matching because sometimes they will have a muddy end result and that's something you want to avoid. Uh, but sometimes, and many times, like most of the times, yeah, most of the times, they will make your artwork look much, much better. So go for that tonal interest. Tip number eight use the white of your paper. Once again, this tip is basically coming from using watercolor, but then again, although the two materials are so different, they are very close to when it comes to techniques. Uh, using the white of your paper basically is that you can leave some parts white. This technique can be especially useful when you are having just a very low number uh, of markers. For example, for a quite a long time I used to have like 12 markers, so I had to make the best out of them. I, I basically had no chance to create gradients or, you know, to blend stuff. So what I did was I basically used the white of the paper and used my colors to indicate the shadows, maybe some of the base colors, but mostly the shadows. And the result was looking good. Of course, it looks totally different than a super beautiful gradient blended masterpiece with uh, copics or a huge number of markers. But you know, when, when you don't have that many markers or when they don't blend at all, for example, using the white of the paper can be very 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 good when 
your markers aren't blending because you most likely will have hard edges and these hard edges can work to your favor when you're only indicating uh, the base colors to some degree more focusing on the shadows for example this is an older artwork but yeah this is an example uh, how you can use just a few of your markers but still it, it will it's a really useful coloring technique and you can use the white of your paper even when you have a bigger number of markers so it can it can give a very interesting feeling to your artwork it's it's a really useful technique and of course it also saves you ink so yay because chip markers tend to run out of ink much much quicker some of them not all of them like for example i have markers that i used to have like for like, eight years and they still are working like it's insane i know i'm not using them so much but still wow they, they they really do have a bunch of ink while on the other hand you know some markers will <laughs> run out on you pretty pretty quickly yeah that sucks but using the light of your paper can save you ink so yay tip number nine use your line art to your advantage markers are bleeding chip markers are bleeding a lot some very 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 cheap markers are bleeding like crazy like you know it it will run through three paper leave a trace on your desk on your floor it so some markers are bleeding like crazy um it will be very hard to do fine edges with those markers so what you can do is cover it up with your line art it's recommended to first uh, do a line art with a thinner uh, fine liner or thinner inking pen and color your artwork and later on when you're done with coloring you can use several more layers of ink to cover up your mistakes it's okay to have thicker line art. It can look even very stylish. For example, I many times use thicker lines for my line art and people are really digging it. Like some even say my inking style is sort of similar to... Mm -hmm. Yep, I can't remember the name. Oh, uh, this is awkward. Okay, let me Google it, sorry. Tatsuya Nomura, of course, oh my God. God, this is this is so awkward. I'm, I'm, I'm so ashamed. Like I'm a huge fan of Kingdom Hearts: The Burden with you, and, and his art style. And God, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm ashamed, really. But yeah, if you take a look at his art style, the line art, it's super cool. I, I really like how he uses uh, the variation with very thin and very thick lines. So with my line arting style. I sort of tried not to copy his style, but uh, sort of mix it with my own style and using those thicker lines to my advantage to cover up the bleeds of the marker. I actually really enjoy uh, doing line arts like that. And uh, I'm also receiving very good feedback from my readers and my followers that they are liking my line arting style. So that's a really good thing. <laughs> and especially if you think that it started out as uh, plan B to cover up the mistakes caused by the markers. So, you know, happy accidents, happy accidents. That's that's it. So, first you just use a thin line art, and then you can go for a thicker, or you can right off the bat go for a thicker or more varied line art. And it's so funny because I'm waving with my hand, trying to emulate those wavy lines, and you can't even see that. I, I certainly need to get a second camera so you can see because it's really funny how I'm always using my hands when I'm talking and no one can see that. Maybe the neighbors through the window and they think I'm a weirdo sitting here and waving all on my own. But yeah, really. So use your line arts to your advantages. In this artwork you can see that I already have thicker lines, but in the end I also went over uh, with the lines. Yeah, I don't think I recorded that, but I did believe it. Tip number 10, use mixed media. And not just the paper, the mixed media paper, that works cool with the markers, but when you're using chip markers, you kind of are likely to use various type of chip markers, but that's still not what I mean. What I mean is you can use other art supplies to make your chip marker artwork look even better. For example, colored pencils. 
I I know I showed this in my cheapest markers review that for example the super cheap touch 5 markers aren't blending aren't creating a gradient they, they are basically just a layer of solid color with a lot of bleed and that's it but you can go over with colored pencils and create all sorts of cool shadings and highlights you can do the same with all sorts of markers with the cheap markers uh, actually many artists are using colored pencils even when they are using the all high and mighty copics because colored pencils are cool especially for finishing touches for the fine details and you know the paper will suck up your marker ink so you can go over uh, with the colored pencils in multiple layers uh, so you can use that to create highlights more refined shadings uh, rim light effects or create that tonal interest i was talking about you don't necessarily have to do that with the markers you can create that with for example the colored pencils or, uh, you know, you can use uh, colored ink or maybe even watercolor or gouache or acrylic. I kind of would be more hesitant to use those because, you know, watercolor needs watercolor paper. But you can't. I mean, you can use markers on watercolor paper, but you will have to throw out your markers pretty, pretty soon because watercolor paper is meant to soak up water and all sorts of liquids and yeah it will make your markers go dry with like one artwork so so watercolor is probably not the best one to pick here unless you're using a mixed media paper with mixed media paper yes sure you you can go for that you totally can go for that just yeah be careful so so yeah you can use all sorts of other art materials to make your artwork look better I most of the times go with the colored pencils and uh, white ink or white uh, gel pens to create highlights or maybe even cover up some mistakes if it's possible or needed because sometimes you know even using the thicker line art is not helping you when you just can't cover up the area because it would look off so sometimes you will need that white ink using all sorts of other art supplies it's basically all up to your choice like you can use whatever you want it's it's completely your freedom and the cheap markers aren't holding you back it's you know i'm not saying they are giving you more freedom because they surely are not but um since you have to make out the best situation with basically diverse art supplies they will need your creativity and your improvisation more and that's something I would call really fun and interesting. Sometimes, sure, it can be frustrating and not so much fun. But in the end, it's, it's a really good feeling to know that, gosh, I created a really good artwork with the sucky art materials. Like, really, I, I use these, these super cheap markers. They, everyone thinks it's no good, but hey, it worked out. I, I could make them look cool because, you know, it's all up to creativity and how you can use whatever you have at your hand and that's the true creative freedom i would say like use whatever you can sometimes i use some really weird shit <laughs> to make my artwork look good like like really there was an artwork where i used a complete makeup set that was really funny but hey in the end it won me an award in an art contest so it was totally worth it i used my sucky markers and a bunch of glitter. It was like magic, really. It was cool, it was fun. So yeah, <laughs> don't hold back. Don't let the cheap art supplies hold you back because art isn't about how much money you have in your pocket or what you can afford. It, it shouldn't be about that, never. Like don't feel like because if you don't have copics or the best art supplies, you are less than any other artist. You are not. You, you can create great artwork with whatever you have so give it your best be creative and just create great artworks with your cheap markers i can do it you can do it screw copics really although sure i really would love some but still yeah <laughs> you don't necessarily need them like i know it's i'm, I'm always yearning for better art supplies because Sure, it's kind of a nice idea that oh, maybe I could do even better with those, but then again, it's not about the art supplies. It's about you, the artist, and what you can do. 
So these were my 10 tips about how to make the best out of your sucky chip markers. No, not, not all of them are sucky. Like they, they can be really good, I swear to God, really. So these were my tips based on all of my experiences of years of using the cheapest possible markers because I am cheap. I really hope you find this video interesting. I'm going to be leaving all sorts of links down below in the video description. You can check out Saturday, uh, my manga series Saigami. And most importantly, there's a new link. I started a Patreon account. I still will focus on creating uh, manga for Saturday AM and creating free YouTube videos here for you guys. But I also figure that Patreon can uh, grant some more possibilities uh, to my viewers, followers, readers, fans uh, who want some more, more exclusive content. Like I have all sorts of rewards for you guys, uh, exclusive artworks, uh, studies, sketches, storyboards, uh, behind the scenes content, exclusive videos, uh, early access to my videos, uh, commissions included in prices. So yeah, I plan to do many, many interesting stuff for Patreon. Uh, don't get me wrong, you still will be able to watch my videos for free. You can still read my manga series in Saturday AM. It's not gonna be changing. Patreon is just a platform that will allow people to support me on on another level or in another method, basically. You know, you can still support me by subscribing to Saturday AM or getting my books. But if you enjoy what I'm creating and you feel like you have an extra buck every month, you wish to throw at me, that would be much appreciated. And uh, I am doing my best to create awesome reward for you guys because I really like how Patreon works like I'm supporting artists on Patreon even though I'm totally broke but you know supporting artists is a really cool thing and if you can receive something in exchange that's a win-win for both because I can support the artists I like and I receive uh, tutorials extra content so I can use those to improve myself to create better artworks and I can receive some extra goodies so it's a win-win so all of the links down below and if you feel like supporting me you can do it by the previously mentioned methods or simply just by subscribing liking or sharing this video or my channel or my artworks all of your support is much appreciated and I'm really grateful so I'm gonna keep doing my best and I will be back with another video hopefully real soon